What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another episode of KM Videos True Stories. I never stopped. I never stopped banging. I, I started banging hard, then I got so hard that it was a shame. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of KM Video True 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 Stories. Today's story takes place in 1997. I believe I was on my way to the house, and this involves this white crib. So this is the first time that I actually seen the white boys roar up and want to get it in. And they was tripping off a crib. So one day we out on the yard. I was just talking, kicking it, hanging. And this white guy walks up, looking like a hillbilly. And he says, where the neighborhood is at? I'm, first thing I'm thinking is, oh shit, we didn't got into it with the white boys. The white boys getting ready to have a conversation with the neighborhood. Somebody done did something out of line or something, and, and they want to talk about it. So the homies are like speechless. I'm like, the neighborhood's right here. Why? He said, I'm from East Coast. Oh, yeah, you from East Coast? Where you from? He said, I'm from 11-8. Oh, yeah? You grew up over there in 11 8 He said, no. I live in the valley. So I was already like, whoa, the Valley. All the homies, the Fodies, the, the Raymonds, and everybody was like, yeah, that nigga ain't from East Coast. So we had conversations. Some people agreed to kick it with him. Some didn't. And I told, I told him, you know, you from East Coast, you a real East Coast, and, and you straight. I said, but if you're not a real East Coast, you gonna get rolled up, homie. He like, no, nah, I'm with this rolling coaster. He do the hand signals and all that. I'm a little low down. 11 8 East Coast Crip. I'm like, all right. So boom. He go to his building. We go to our building. We come out for night yard. And he tells us, man, the white boys are tripping, man. They tripping. What? The white boys tripping? Yeah, they said I can't be a crip on the yard. So we asked him, what you gonna do? He like, I don't know. I said, no, you do know. You're going to go up there and you're going to get off on them. And we're going to have your back. He like, I don't know. You don't know. You going to roll it up? He said, no, I ain't rolling it up. All right, then. You a crip? Yeah. All right. All good. He stays on the yard about a week, functioning with us and everything. Boom. He go to his dorm. We go to ours. The next morning... Cuz come out with a broken jaw. He's, I mean, he looks straight. He don't look stomped out or beat up or nothing, but he's telling us his jaw is broken. He can't talk. He's talking like he got marbles in his mouth, like he's underwater or something. Short dude, dude was short. He was a little stocky, but he was a short dude, and, um, I ask him, what we gonna do? He says he don't know. So I tell the homies, all right, we finna have a crib meeting. We finna have a neighbor, rolling coast meeting. So boom, Crips come on the yard. It's, it's about 12 or 13 of us. Wiz from Raymond there. Uh, can't remember who else. I think uh, Baby Crazy Keith from Harlem may have been there. But nevertheless, we throw this little small meeting. And the white boy don't want to leave, but he doesn't seem like he's confident in himself. He definitely don't feel like he's confident that we got his back, but he wants us to have his back. So again, some of the homies ain't agreeing to roll with this dude. They like, man, he white, let him go. 
So that's the politics, the back and forth for Mark Ellis. He white, let him go. You know what I'm saying? He knew he was going to have problems. But then we got the ones, myself, Moody, a few others. If he going to stay down, we going to stay down with him. He's a crip. This ain't no black or white thing. Man, this is a crip thing. So I marched the homies through. I remember leading the homies through. I think little Slip Rock may have been there. We lead the homies through the door. Looking for the dudes who broke his jaw. I told him, point them out, point them out. We're going to holler at them. We go through the door. He don't see them. So I said, all right, you know, we're going to wait by the door. And when you see them, let us know. So we waiting by the door. People coming in, people going out, and he don't see them. So the homie Wiggs was like, man, this ain't right. This dude, he got to know who got him. He got to know who broke his jaw, who stumped him out. He said they had been getting at him for two days. So I tell him, man, it's on. It's on. We finna come through here. And one thing that tripped me out, there was a group of Muslims in there or professed to be Muslims. I don't know what kind of Muslims, what denominator or what have you, but it's like five of them. And they didn't really associate with us, at least on the yard. I never had any interactions with these dudes, so I asked the Muslim, like, what's up? They minding their own business. They say, you know, they mind their own business. And, you know, I, I forget what they call the white dude. They call him some some term, like, you know, we that's his thing, that's y'all thing, man. We ain't involved in that, all right? So once again, it ain't a black thing, it's a crypt thing. So we tell them. We get a dude like, man, we finna tear this motherfucker up. It's been a rock and roll in your dorm. He like, it's going to spill over. To, we don't care if it spill over. They done fucked you up. You represent Crip. Boom. So we go back to the dorm. And we talking about me, Wiz, Moody. We talking about, man, it's got to go down. And we going to get off. We going to go over there and we going to get off on it. But then... The white boy from East Coast is walking across the yard. We looking out the window like, cuz going across the yard. So the homie's like, he must have stuck one of them. He must have got down on him. Nah, we ain't hear no ruckus. We ain't no yard down. No police ran over there. I don't know what's going on. We got to holler in the mall. But he never come back. So he rolled it up or they rolled him up or whatever transpired. He left the yard, and that was the end of that. There was no talk, no discussion, no fighting, no nothing with the white boys. But the reason why I tell this story is because on YouTube, there's people that say Mexican Crips and Mexican Bloods can't walk the yard. White Crips, white Bloods can't walk the yard. This is one of the reasons why they say that. There have been instances where these dudes got to roll it up without question. I've seen Mexicans, Mexican Crips, actually pretend that they wasn't Crips. So they didn't have no beef until they were able to come over into the module and be with all Crips. So this does happen. Just like the others, there used to be a lot of others that claimed Crip or blood and was with the business. But then when I was in prison and jail, those other cars started to grow and they had their own thing and they basically either fell to themselves or fell under the orchestration of the Southern Mexicans. So they, they would not get in line with blacks and blacks would not get in line with them, obviously. So these are the conversations that you see in the comment section that people get at me about over the years. But, uh, Back in the day when I was going to county jail, because I hadn't gone to prison back in the day, back, back in the day, day, but in, in, in jail, man, them Usos, nah, they were some of the hardest Crips and some of the hardest blood in the county jail, repping without question, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, shout out to the Usos, man, and shout out to the white boys and the Mexicans that claim Crip and can get away with it in prison without rolling it up. Shout out to the Rolling Coast. Shout out to everybody that click like, subscribe, and leave comments. 
With that said, I'm out of here. Just want to touch on that story real quick. I'm out of here, y'all. Salute.